We're joined now by San Diego State head coach Brian Dutcher and student athletes Nathan Mensa, Matt Bradley, Aguap Arope, and Adam Seiko. We'll ask Coach Dutcher to open things up with a statement, then we'll take questions for the student athletes first. Coach. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Coach Danny Hurley and UConn Huskies on a national championship. Very deserving. Uh, they played an elite level the entire tournament. Uh, we battled, battled back to five in the second half, but gave them too much separation. And we weren't at our best tonight, and we had to be at our best to win the game. And a lot of that has to do with UConn. But I'm proud of our guys. These guys have given me everything they've had. Six years, five years, five years, five years. These guys are what it's all about. And it's about college athletics. These guys are good people, and they're good students, and they're really good players. So we can feel good about the things we did. And we are. We feel good about the things we did. Disappointed in the loss. But uh, there was a brotherhood in that locker room that will never be divided uh, by a margin of victory or not winning at all. That brotherhood's going to last a lifetime. I told him that. And I was in there with Juwan Howard, and we, we were sad many years ago together, too, when I was an assistant coach and he played for us. And he was in here supporting me because that's the kind of brotherhood that we all have and will continue to have. So I'm proud of these guys. If you have a question for the Aztec student athletes, please raise your hand. Let's take one four rows back just to the right of the aisle. Justin Cox, Daily Aztec. Matt, for you, I know it's obviously still fresh, but what do you think you'll remember the most about this season? Um, I think uh, this season was a great comeback story as far as, uh, you know, bouncing back from that 30-2 and two season, um, the year after when they lost in the uh, – San Diego State lost in the first round, when, you know, when I joined the team, lost in the first round. Like, we did so much this season. And uh, it's just a great comeback story. And, you know, I think uh, I'm, I'm just so lucky to be part of a team where I was able to set the precedent for, you know, what this team has to come when it comes to postseason play. And, you know, moving forward, you know, we got a taste of it. And, you know, everybody's like – I can see it in everybody's faces returning like they want it again, you know. And, you know, we're sad. But ultimately we just got to keep our head high and just, you know, realize we had a great comeback story this season. Center of the room, midway back. Isaac Bourne, mid-major madness. If I may ask all the players, you know, what does it, be, what does it feel like to be part of just such a brotherhood – and, you know, end the season off, you know, with your guys. We'll ask Adam to take that first, then Aguac, then Matt, then Nathan. Yeah, this season has been unbelievable. Um, these guys next to me, the other seniors we have, um, it's just been a blessing to be around these group of guys, and not just on the court, but they're even better people off the court, which will matter here at San Diego State. And um, all these guys have a chip on their shoulder. Coaches, they recruit people who – you know, guys who maybe aren't the highest touted, but guys who want to win. And we're, we're winners every day. We practice like winners every day. Uh, I couldn't thank, you know, God for this moment being a national championship. It doesn't even feel like we were a national championship, but we just were winning games. And we just love winning. So shout out to the coaches, shout out to the fans, our players who play their house out every game and, and every single day. And I love these guys. Sorry, we'll ask Matt to take that next. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, when I entered the portal and came here, you know, uh, I was really like during that time with COVID and stuff, I was I was really ready to just stop playing, you know. Like, I, I told myself I was just like, you know what, Matt, it's been tough. Like, let's just go home and get a job, and you know, caught caught the day, you'll be all right. But uh, you know, Coach Dutch, he's one of the most genuine guys I've ever met, and uh, the way he just took me in. And, you know, the brotherhood and these guys and actually having real leadership that I can follow. Uh, it just, you know, it changed the directory of my life for sure. And, uh, it's more than just basketball, you know. Sorry, I'm crying up here and stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm just really thankful for Coach Dutch and everybody that played a part in my move here going to San Diego State. So, yeah, that's how I feel. Nathan. Uh, for me, I feel like if you get a taste of this brotherhood, uh, you kind of long for something that is, uh, goes far more than uh, winning basketball games. But uh, I, I feel like myself, AG, especially the older guys, uh, we kind of like 
went through a, a tradition of our freshman year struggling, uh, sophomore year with success, uh, junior year we kind of uh, tip it off where you notice what we can achieve and we had some transfer guys, uh, Darion, Matt and all those guys came in with like some sense of agency that they wanted to win for uh, those who have missed out on this opportunity. So you see like the selfishness, the selflessness that uh, everyone on this team possess. That's one thing I'll say I'll miss the most about uh, th this team that we have here. How glad. <clears throat> this is that on it. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's just so much more than basketball with these guys. I mean, there's, there's a lot of days where I know several of us have come in and we don't want to be there, but I think it takes like one guy to be smiling and next thing you know, I'm, I'm back in it. Um, some, some that small, but goes a long ways. Um, some days I come in, I think, I'm thinking we're going to have the worst practice ever and I have the best practice ever because Matt, Nate, Adam, Darion, Lamont, someone was able to pick me up by doing something simple as saying, let's go with a smile. I mean, that's, it's hard to put in the words, but that example is just it's how deep this, brother, this brotherhood runs. And uh, I think we've each gone through our own uh, trials and tribulations. And uh, there's kind of, there's, there's that sense of, I don't know, shared suffering uh, where, we, where we're able to under, understand each other. And I think that's, that's why we're really able to put ourselves to the side and uh, <clears throat> put together just a special, special year and a special run. You know, this is, I know we didn't win, but this is something that, that I've dreamed of since I was a kid. I'm sure it's what we all dreamed of. But coming from humble circumstances uh, to being here, um, just praise God that I get to share with these guys next to me and the guys in the locker room. Up front on the right side, Myron. This will likely be the last question for the student athletes. Yeah, Myron Mike at ESPN. For Adam and Matt, uh, obviously you cut the lead to deficit down to five points. What was it about them that made it so hard to close that gap over the course of the game? Adam first, then Matt. You know, they're, they're a super physical team, and, you know, one thing they do really well is offensive rebound. You know, they're the best offensive rebound team in the country, and we've been harping on that all week. Um, you know, we did our best, you know, to, to hit them and – Try and secure rebounds, but then we also got in, you know, a little foul trouble early in the half, 13 minute mark. They're already in the bonus, which was tough. Um, so just their, their ability to offensive rebound, their ability to, you know, hawk and some timely shots. Um, but they have a really good team. They're well coached, and, you know, we fought back in there. We knew that when we were down, it wasn't over with. You know, we've been in that position many times this year. Uh, so we cut down to five, and, you know, we had a chance to, you know, cut it down lower, but, you know, they just made. A little bit more plays, you know. Uh, so, so it happens, and you know, I couldn't be more blessed to be here and uh, remember this forever. Matt. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna lie. They got a lot of weapons. They were pretty good. Uh, and, like to beat them, we had to, you know, make shots. I, I shot poorly, you know, and uh, you had to have a really good game to beat those dudes on the offensive end. But defensively, you know, we fought hard. We cut it to five. It wasn't sweet at all, you know. And they got presence down low shooting from the outside, you know, a lot of guys stepped up for them, so, and they make all their free throws, so, you know, they're a really good team, well coached, and uh, hats off to them, they, they, they battled, and we battled too, so, yeah, they're a really good team. We'd like to thank Agua and Nathan, Matt, and Adam for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the Aztec locker room, which is open until 1126, another 20 minutes there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Y'all. Questions for Coach Dutcher. We'll go back to Myron on the right side up front. You cut it to five. Uh, what was so challenging going from there and trying to close that gap uh, against this UConn team? Great offensively. You know, eventually, you know, they made a timely basket or two. We didn't. They're hard to score on. Their length bothered us around the rim. You know, they had their way with the entire field this tournament. So, uh, I just said when we were down at halftime, I said, let's cut it to six with 10 to go. Let's get back in there and let's make them play a close game. Let's make the margin where it's uncomfortable. 
and I think we got it to five with six minutes ago, and then it was seven, and we missed a one and one, and then it kind of ballooned up from there. So I like the grit of my team. I like how hard we fight. We don't give in. We came from 14 down the last game, and when we cut it to five, I think there were people in the stands that thought, hey, they're capable of doing it again, and we were. But we ran into too good a team, and we didn't play at our best. And they, like I said, there are a reason for that, that we didn't play at our best. But we had to play better in order to have a chance to win the game. Coach, we're going to take one question each from the reporters from the East Village Times. Coach, uh, that first half, I think you missed 14 straight field goals, went through an 11-minute field goal drought. Did it just come down to missing shots, or was it adjusting to the UConn defense? I, we got off to a red heart start in the game offensively, and then AG had a post up where he missed a jump hook, and then he had a roll to the basket where he got it blocked. And then we had another play. We got to the rim. And those are plays you have to make over length if you're going to have a chance to win the game. So their length bothered us at the rim. You know, Jaden had a tough time finishing. And he finally went through the body a little bit more in the second half. But, uh, you know, they're, they're the hottest team in college basketball. We thought we'd have a chance. Uh, we cut it to five, but obviously we didn't have enough offense to overcome as good as they are. Continuing with East Village. Coach, they uh, didn't actually know who was going to be coming out here, which players were going to come out until the very, very end. Why was it important for you to have these four gentlemen come with you in this moment? Because they were the seniors that have used up eligibility. They've given everything to the program. And what better group to hear from than guys that have been here for five and six years and poured all into it and to see the raw emotion and to feel good about college athletics when you hear from kids like this, from young men like this. I mean, if you can't, the, the box score and the articles won't read anything about it, and only the people that are sitting in this room, the dozen or 20 of us, will have a feel for what this was tonight, a feel for what it really is. And it'll all be words, but you won't feel the emotion that you fa felt by sitting in here with these young men. Center of the room. It's the back right microphone, Matt. Hold on one second, please. We're going to get the front left microphone. I still you. got good hearing. I can hear him. Nick Lawrence, mid-major man. As coach, you mentioned after that win on Saturday that you aren't a mid-major team, but you're, you come from a mid-major conference. Just talk about what that means for the state of the game that you guys made it here. You, you gave UConn the toughest test of the tournament. It was a five-point game with about five minutes remaining. Yeah, we got a good team, and with that being said, Florida Atlantic, we were very fortunate to get by them, and they got a really good team, too, everybody back. So the state of basketball is in good shape right now, you know, and uh, you don't have to have millions of dollars in NIL, and you don't have to get every kid in the portal to be successful. You just have to have kids that are about the right things, uh, that want to win beyond anything else, and are willing to sacrifice to do that, and that's what we have. Second row. Coach Hayden Silly with Cronkite News. Um, your program was the first since Indiana State in 1979 to be the first non-Power 5 team to be in the NCAA championship game. When you think about that, and especially with the rumblings going around of San Diego State possibly going to the Pac-12, just what are your thoughts on this accomplishment, taking this program to the championship game? Well, I wish we had Larry Bird. We might have had a chance to win. <laughs> no, uh, no. It's not just our athletic program. Our university is incredible. Our, everything about San Diego State is at the highest level you can get to, academically, socially, uh, athletically. Everything we're about is first class. And so if another conference was interested in us, I, I would not be surprised. Now, whether anything happens or not, that's beyond my control. But I think we represent anything, everything good about uh, college athletics and education. Coach, final question up front to the right, Meyer. Before this tournament, Florida Atlantic hadn't won a tournament game, hadn't been in the tournament. Uh, obviously, you all, your first national championship, uh, Miami in the Final Four for the first time, and now UConn wins their fifth championship. What does all this say about the changing uh, state of college basketball and the parity that exists in the sport right now? I mean, Florida Atlantic was way better in person than they were on tape. They got everybody back but one guy. I mean, I don't see who's going to beat them next year. I mean, they're fantastic. We have a good team coming back. We're going to be very good next year. I had two freshmen. They're as good as any freshman I've ever had in my program that couldn't get on the floor. They're going to contribute next year. They're going, 
people are going to act, well, where, why didn't he play last year? Well, we were really good last year. So we're going to be good again next year. But with that being said, you run into the tournament and you look at all the seeds that get through, it's hard to win in March. You know, and that's why everyone is so disappointed in, in our success over the last three years. It's like we lost a one-possession game to Houston. We lost a one-possession game to Creighton. And we ran into a hot Syracuse team. It's hard to win in March. And those teams are really good, too. But you have to get a little luck. You have to get the right matchups. And you have to be playing your best. And that's what this team did. So we've had a lot of good teams at San Diego State. And we'll continue to have good teams. We'd like to thank Coach Dutcher for joining us here in the main interview room. Congrats on a great season, Coach, and a great run to the final. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. The Aztecs locker room is open for another 13 minutes or so. Student athletes are available in the San Diego State locker room right now. We'll have UConn down here in a few moments. Head Coach Dan Hurley is going to be joined by Adama Sinogo. Jordan Hawkins, and Tristan Newton. The other student-athletes will be available in the UConn locker room. Watching my sixth. Once again, when Coach Hurley arrives, he'll be with student athletes Adama Sonogo, Jordan Hawkins, and Tristan Newton. The other UConn student athletes will be available in their locker room. That locker room will be open for 30 minutes. We'll let you know when we know the locker room is open so we can make an estimation on when it will close. Again, when Coach Hurley arrives, we'll take a statement from him and then questions for the UConn student-athletes. They'll then go back to the locker room. Coach will remain with us for another five minutes for questions and answers.
Arizona State. Tighten that up. Get to the question. Now I can't call any because it takes too long. What? It's a good question. Just tighten it. Cross me up on the players. You cross me up on the players. Give it a rookie all the way. Up. Well, I mean, he's a senior, but first time in, and it's all the way at the end. So I had to start on the inside, which I usually don't do. This one was good. Matt, you thought we should do that one with three mics? You thought you'd challenge us? Turn it up. <laughs> UConn is still headed to the locker room. They do get a cooling off period. It's a short one, five minutes. They're not in the locker room yet, just so everyone is aware. San Diego State probably is about five minutes remaining on their open locker room.
UConn is now headed into their locker room, then they'll have their cooling off period, and then they'll come and see us. The San Diego State locker room should be just about closed right now. UConn locker room's not yet open, making it easy to make choices. UConn's in their locker room, which means we're going to see them in about five minutes or less.
Once again, in just a moment, we'll be joined by UConn head coach Dan Hurley, student athletes Adama Sinogo, Jordan Hawkins, and Tristan Newton. The student athletes who do not appear here in the main interview room will be available in the 30 minute open locker room period. Once Coach Hurley is here, we know that the locker room is open. We'll try to make some approximate times available for you guys if we know when it's open. We also know just about when it's going to close, so we'll keep you guys informed on that. If you're joining us here in the main interview room, please take a moment to silence your cell phone. Please refrain from using any flash photography. No video recording devices can be used. That includes your phone, and you cannot go live to any social media platform. The transcripts from the news conferences this evening, the San Diego State one is already available. The UConn one will be available shortly after the conclusion of the news conference and video will be available at ncaa.veritone.com. Last news conference of the week coming up next. So as soon as UConn leaves the locker room, 30-minute clock starts. They can choose to extend. Sometimes the national champion does that. But all I can promise you is 30. Just to review the format for this news conference, we'll get an opening statement from Coach Hurley. Then we'll take questions for the UConn players. After we're done with questions for the UConn players, or five minutes has elapsed, the UConn players will go back to the open locker room. Coach Hurley will stay with us for five minutes or so. So the first question that we'll actually take is going to be questions for one of the student athletes from UConn. You can pick Tristan, Jordan, or Adama. There's, there's hard copies also? You want an online transcript? Uncle Jesse, you back there? Where do the ASCP transcripts get posted to on the internet? NCAA.com backslash transcripts. Videos at NCAA.veritone.com. Hard copies of the transcripts will be outside the media workroom. It's a very long table with a number of papers on them. Some of them will have quotes for you to enjoy and use or not. Dom? UConn is making its way down here to the main interview room, which means that the UConn locker room is now open. 
let's call it 1135 to 1205. The national champions have arrived. Hey. Congrats. Don't drop that. <laughs> Congrats. Good. Good to see you. Congrats. What's that? There is water. We do have some water. Hey, Coach. You got a costume change there. I did. I did. I got a little wet. I'd imagine. We're joined now by the head coach of the national champion Yukon Huskies, Dan Hurley, with Adama Sonogo, Jordan Hawkins, and Tristan Newton. We'll ask Coach Hurley to open things up with a statement. Then we'll take questions first for the student athletes. Coach. Yeah, hey, obviously, uh, you know, dream come true for all of us. Uh, you know, as a part of the program, uh, you know, we, we sold the vision. You know, I sold the vision to. David Benedict and President Herbst and President Radanka and the university that I could, you know, put together a special group of people, a coaching staff and unbelievable players like this. Uh, um, you know, so it feels great to come through on promises made by me to, to all this, you know, the great people of Connecticut. And then with these guys, this was our vision. This was our dream. This is what we talked about when we recruited these guys, that we could get together and do something big like this. And, uh, it's just great to come through uh, on promises made to players and to this university. And then it was an honor to, uh, to play against San Diego State today, too. I got to tell you, uh, I think it was probably the most physical, you know, one of the toughest teams we played this year, certainly one of the best. And I just got so much admiration and respect for how, how they play their culture uh, and, and their coach. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's one of the best coaches in the country. We'll take questions for the UConn student athletes. If you have a question for the players from UConn, please raise your hand. Jesse, you got to go to the front row, Jesse. We'll go to the back, right side, Billy. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Uh, Jordan, the uh, can can you describe just the three pointer that you hit when they had cut the lead? To, I think it was sixty to fifty five, and just what what you feel like, you know, the team needed at that point to steady itself because you hadn't been in, you know, any tight games in the tournament? Um, coach threw something up for me, so I know he trusted me to take that shot. And I just had to make it. I had to do the easy part. So um, all credit to my teammates uh, for getting me open on those screens and coach for trusting me. So, yeah. Continuing with questions for the student athletes, Cronkite. Third row, center. Adama, Hayden, Silly, Cronkite News. I understand that your family still resides in Mali. I just want to ask you how it's been to have their support, even from you know the other side of the world. Uh, definitely, I think uh, my family is like is a major part of my success right now. You know, every time I do something, like I think about them. You know, David is on. You know, I, I go high every day, so I know for sure they're watching this game. I know they I know for sure they were part, they're proud of me. You know, like. There's a lot of Africa, uh, African player, like Malian played in, uh, in color, you know. Me be able to uh, get, have a chance to play in the Final Four, and uh, I definitely, like, I think I'm a member of family pro, you know, and it's something that I will never forget in my life yet. <laughs> Up front to the left, Dom. Right, Donna, Maury Hartford Current. Adama, way back, I think in September, Emeka Okafor came to campus, and yeah. one of the things that you said then was that you kind of wanted to do what he did. Right. which is win a championship, be an, an most outstanding player. Yeah. How's it feel now that you've fulfilled on a very lofty goal? Man, it feels great, you know. Like uh, like you said, he came in the summer. Omeka came in the summer. Like, I talked to him for like an hour, you know. Like, uh, I got some advice from him, you know. And, uh, like, be able to talk to a champion like him, like, definitely, like, it's definitely something that everybody needed, you know. So, like, I told him, like, he, he told us, you guys are like, after watching it, after he watched our parties, it was like, uh, I said a lot of time on you guys, you know. You guys, are, you guys are a special team, you know, and he said, like, we just got to stay strong, stay connected as a family, you know, because he said that was, like, one thing, like, uh, we need to do, like, stay connected as a family. I think uh, we, uh, we did that this year, and uh, 
And here we are. Yeah. Center of the room, most of the way back. And here we are. Jordan, yesterday your cousin won a national championship. Today you won a national championship. Just talk about how special that is, and to add on to that, just how great it is for the DMV. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely amazing uh, showing that kids that, are, that were our age at the time, we were dreaming about the same thing. I mean, we saw that it's possible. So that is amazing. Uh, I mean, it, it's absolutely amazing um, that we both get this opportunity. I mean, the family reunion is going to be crazy, so that's all I know. All the way back to the right of the aisle. Put your hand up for us so we can see you. Thank you. Uh, Tristan, um, just what, what does this moment mean for you? Uh, it means a lot. Great credit to the coaches and, and my teammates. The vision we had when I came here was to win a national championship, make it to the final four and win a national championship. And I came here just to do that. And then just real blessed and thankful for these guys around me. If you have a question for the players from UConn, please raise your hand. We have one in the front, second row. Okay. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. So I'm DC Livers with the Black Sports Network. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. I got a chance to talk to you guys and talk to Angel. And basically, there's been a lot of racism inside of sports. Can you guys talk about what it felt like to see what happened to Angel? And do you, what do you want to say to her right now? Um, I mean, Angel, she, she has the heart of a lion. Um, she's not worried about any of that. She's going to play her game. She's from the dirty streets of Baltimore, so she's the toughest of the toughest. So that, that's not that's nothing to her, so, yeah. To the left of the aisle toward the back. That's great. Got a microphone for you. Thank you. Um, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Jordan, could you describe that 11-minute stretch where – Y'all held them without a field goal, and what do you feel like that did for the overall game? Um, I mean, we're a, a great defensive team. Um, when, when we can get stops like that and get out in transition, that, that really impacts our game. It really impacts the game. Um, just holding them to that stretch, is, uh, I think that that was really big for us. Um, and yeah. Is there a final question for the student athletes from UConn? With no more, oh, let's go back up to Don. We'll, we'll, go, we'll get you, Don. Yeah, Tristan, you had that stretch where you scored seven points in a row, and it seemed like maybe that's indicative of what this team was all about, that anybody could kind of step up at any time and, and take a game over. What, what, what do you remember about that stretch? What, what did you see unfold in there? Um, I mean, before the game started, my coaches told me I need to be aggressive and look to score to win the game. So the first bucket, the spin move, uh, just yeah. take advantage of the mismatch because he was, he was a smaller guard. Second one was uh, somebody stole the ball, so credit to them in there. Andre found me on a three, so really credit to my teammates and the space that we had and the coaches for believing me and telling me to be aggressive today. We want to thank and congratulate national champions Adama Sonogo, Jordan Hawkins, and Tristan Newton. They're going to head back to the UConn locker room, which remains open for another 20 or so minutes. You got it. Don't give that thing up. Questions for coach. We'll take one just to the right of the aisle. Fifth row, name and media outlet, then your question. <clears throat> Brian Smith, Houston Chronicle. Dan, you mentioned the, the dream come true part, but also the vision that, that you sold when you started. This program has obviously had incredible highs, but has been through a lot in the last five, seven years. What, what's it mean to you to, to be on the stage right now as a national champion, knowing what this program went through in those previous years and what you were able to bring it to with this team this year? You know, I'm, I'm still thinking about some things that the typical Dan Hurley fashion, like the amount of missed layups. Uh, Jordan's dunk to start to say. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, we should have been up 18 and 20 at halftime. Uh, that's just really the way my mind works. You know, I think when I get back to the hotel and we get off the bus and I just get in a room for a little bit, I'll be able to kind of decompress a little bit. Um, I'm just mostly proud of the way that we've done it and with the type of people that we've done it, the way we, you know, recruit young players, develop young players. Um, you know, we, we do it without cheating. We do it without, uh, without lying. Um, you know, it's, it's truly been building a program and a culture. Um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky I have the best coaching staff in the country that attracts these incredible you know, types of players.
Coach, next question is to the red aisle. Kevin. Hey, Kevin Sweeney, Sports Illustrated. Coach, um, obviously UConn's championships have been defined by stars like Emeka and you know, Shabazz Napier, Kembo. Another double-double day today from Adama. Where does his run – what has his run meant to this team's ability to win a championship? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously cemented himself into, you know, the, the pantheon of, you know, of, of greatest, obviously greatest – Greatest big guys um, with all the production and you know, back-to-back first-team All-League, and now this to have the national championship just puts him in a position in you know one of the most storied you know programs in in college basketball. That now he's you know he's an all-time great. Coach on the right side up front, Brendan Quinn of the Athletic. Dan, uh, you know what your family's name means in basketball in New Jersey, whatever not. Um, what does it mean to you to add to that name um, in this sport? You know, I, I think people, um, you know, I, I, obviously for me, uh, you know, I've had my own path, my own journey. Um, I, I think a lot of people, um, maybe I, and I've probably done it to myself by being so, such an intense, fiery coach that people have always focused more on, you know, the sideline kind of antics than they have on, you know, my total body of work over the course of my career. There's not many coaches, um, you know, that were as, ex- as successful as my teams were at St. Benedict's, um, you know, at Wagner in Rhode Island. So many coaches in the country that have won 25 games or more in three different programs and now have a national championship. So um, obviously there's a certain level of validation that's going to come from this, Um, you know, but uh, I just feel like my career in coaching, even prior to this, I I think most coaches, maybe I don't do a great job kissing the media's ass and presenting and, you know, this this image that's incredibly likable, but, um, you know, I've, I, I am who I am. I'm where I'm from. I'm from, uh, I'm, I'm from from Jersey City, and this is how people from Jersey City act. Up front to the left, Dom. Yeah, uh, Dom and Maury Hartford Current. Dan, uh, you emphasized outside, uh, out on the quarter, you said with some emphasis, we've got our own, but we have our own now. Uh, can you kind of expand on just what that means, that this is your piece of a storied program? Yeah, and, and you know, I hope coaches, Coach Calhoun, too, uh, you know, he's had this his hand in this one as well. Um, I wish he could have been here for it because I know, uh, you know, he, he's been a big part of helping us get here. Uh, it's just, you know, when you're in that, when you're in that Worth Champion Center and, you know, Gino and, and um, you know, and everything that Gino's done and, and what they do on a yearly basis and, all their hardware, and obviously, you know, we propped up in recruiting those four national championship trophies in front of these kids, and we had nothing to do with that. And, um, you know, and then we, we removed them about 18 months ago when we started feeling like we had put something together that could make a run at getting a fifth. Um, so we removed those and put them in there and got them out of our offices and said, like, you know, we don't want any trophies in here until we've got our own. And, um, it's just when you're at a place like that, you know, it's a little bit empty um, until you until you feel like you could, like, join the club. <laughs> I feel like now I've, I've, we've held up our end of the bargain that the women's team's been carrying for so long, uh, you know, since, you know, forever, and uh, it seems like. And now, obviously, Coach Calhoun, Kevin Ali, um, Gino, it, it feels good to accomplish what, what they've done. On the right side, toward the back. Greg Frank, Sports Map Radio. Dan, coming into this season, you had not won an NCAA tournament game at UConn. How much pressure were you feeling as the season unfolded to deliver this result? Me and Kamani, we talked about it when, once we got um, our roster together and knew we had a squad. Uh, you know, me and Kamani and Luke just kept saying, like, you know, the most pressure-packed game that we will ever coach in or play in. Uh, was going to be that first round game, and we didn't know who it was going to be. And then, obviously, it was Iona, and then 
the hysteria started. They were playing the boogeyman, uh, Rick Pitino, and um, you know, and that we were in big trouble. I mean, we knew. I mean, we knew we couldn't go out, you know, like suckers again in the first weekend. Um, you know, but we also didn't. You know, we didn't wear that around the players, but we certainly felt it. Yeah, but listen, we came into the season unranked. Um, you know, so we had an edge to us to start the year to prove people wrong. In the back to the left of the aisle. Yeah, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, you mentioned being unranked. You know, no one, two or three seed was here. You know, 16 beats a one again. Is it fitting that you guys were unranked and, you know, lost five out of six in January, but and nobody could touch you here? Yeah, I just think it's such a hard tournament um, to be successful in and navigate and, Obviously, we, we, the last two teams we've played, I mean, uh, you know, Miami, uh, you know, beating Houston and Texas back-to-back -back in Kansas City, I mean, that's a heck of a team. Um, we played Alabama. We know how good they are. I mean, these guys, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, beating them and, uh, and a Creighton team that um, this tournament's hard to navigate. It's not seven-game series. It's not five-game series. Uh, and now with the extra COVID year and NIL and the portal, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I, I think it's just, it's made things even more challenging for the biggest brands and the highest seeds to advance because there's so much parity. And coach, we're going to wrap things up up front to the left with the young man covering his 50th final four. <laughs> Hoops. <one>. Hoops. <laughs> hey, Let's go, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, a few years back, the Big East decided to realign and put an emphasis on basketball. How much dividends does that pay for this league over the years? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I, we, I thought we were the best conference in the country this year. Um, I think year in and year out we are. Um, I felt like our top five in particular, especially when Providence had it going, it, it was clearly, you know, the, the, the best, the, the the top four or five was clearly the best. And it showed in the NCAA tournament, you know, if Xavier doesn't lose Fremantle, they're very easily in the final four. Um, you know, obviously Creighton was right there, tough call away from maybe playing us tonight, um, you know, here. And then Shaka Smart, you know, for me was, was the best coach in the country in their season. They were... Uh, you know, up until the, you know, that tough second-round game versus uh, Michigan State, like they had as good a season as anybody in the country. So, And then Providence was playing great until they started to struggle late. So Big East was the best conference in the country this year. We were the most successful in the NCAA tournament, and we have the national championship. So we were the best league in the country this year, and I don't think that's going to change with the type of coaches that now have moved around. I don't think we're going anywhere. I know we're not. And with that, we'd like to thank and congratulate the head coach of the national champions, Coach Hurley. Let's go. Thank you very much, Coach. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. I'm taking this, too. I'm taking it here. You get them all. The UConn locker room is still open. The student athletes will receive their news conference placards and our thanks. Thanks, everybody. That's going to wrap things up here in the main interview room. We enjoyed it all week. UConn Locker Room is still open. Make your way down there and enjoy.